What's up everybody, I'm Matt Moran and this is the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz, which is Hyundai's brand new pickup truck. Let's go for a walk around and I'll show you all the cool features here on the outside of the Santa Cruz. So the first thing you'll probably notice is this front end, which is crazy. So whenever the car is running like it is currently, you'll see all these lights that light up here on the front end of this thing. And uh, it really makes a statement on the road, especially whenever it's cloudy or darker, to have those stand out, it's, uh, it makes a huge statement. In addition, just the very bold styling you have here on this thing. I mean, look at the boxy squared off fenders and these cuts here in the front bumper. By the way, that's where the actual headlights are. These are not headlights. They're just all daytime running lights here, even though they kind of look like where you would expect the headlights to be. But uh, yeah, and then whenever the car is off, these are just like a dark chrome appearance. And so you can't even tell that they're lights whenever it's turned off, which is also a very cool little trick. And uh, But yeah, I mean, just look at how aggressive this thing looks. It is really really an impressive look here and this thing has gotten a lot of looks i've had people taking pictures of it people turning and staring and stuff it really stands out um honestly i think this is the vehicle i've gotten the most looks with this year probably so far i mean it is um pretty a pretty exciting design i think for most people you also have these 20 inch wheels here on the limited version which have a very cool look too but even just the body cladding here on the sides has these cool little touches like you'll see Little uh, cutouts there showing a uh, you know, little silhouette of the truck. And uh, I mean, also on the sides here, you can see how it's, again, very uh, geometric, I guess, with its designs there. And so it's a pretty cool look. Again, this is similar to what you see on the new Tucson, which this vehicle is based on, but they built the new Tucson with this vehicle uh, in mind. They were going to do this all along. And so that's why the Tucson was kind of over-engineered so they could turn it into a truck. So this isn't um, wimpy or anything like that. I mean, it still can do some legit truck stuff, which I'll get to here in a little bit. But I mean, the side profile, very, very cool in this thing. And uh, out back here, it's also very bold again as well. These large tail lamps that I think look really cool and the bold Santa Cruz, they're stamped into the tailgate. And uh, yeah, it's just a very cool touch. And out back here, you know, it's the one thing you're probably most interested in being a truck is how it does truck stuff. So, um, you know, as far as the truck bed goes, I love how you have these little steps here. So it's very easy to hop up into the truck bed. And uh, the truck bed itself is decent in size. It's about 52 inches long. It's a little bit more narrow towards the back. Um, one really nice thing though is you have this cover here for it. And this cover actually can support, they say up to 220 pounds. So if you actually wanna stand on this and you're under 220 pounds, you can probably get away with it. Although, I don't know if I'd trust it, but I guess if you wanna you know, get something on the roof or something like that, you can do that a little easier back here. And it's also nicely locked. And that should allow this to open right up. And there you go. It's so nice that it just rolls right back too. So there's no folding of a cover that you have to do. It just all you know, folds right in there. I mean, that does mean that you're limited a little bit. You know, it isn't totally wide open with that all the way back. But still, again, I think if you want the biggest truck bed possible, this is clearly not going to be the car you're gonna pick. But a uh, little cup, cup holders there and the bed as well and you also have a lot of cool little touches so you'll see lights lots of tie down points you even see you have these little uh, cutouts here that's for wood blocks so if you want to make this two levels you can uh, put the wood blocks there and you know kind of have two different levels there if you'd like and so that's a cool little touch you also see there's these little cubbies in both sides that open right up and um, I mean, nothing you know too sophisticated, but just extra little storage there, which is always nice. But the biggest extra storage space here is you'll see there's this whole truck bed trunk that opens up. And uh, so it's not huge. This is way smaller than what you get in like the Ridgeline, for example. The Ridgeline, uh, it's super deep. It's probably three times as deep as this is. Uh, but I mean, you know, as you can see, I can put my tripod and slider and stuff in there. I think you can fit, you know, a few grocery bags, things like that, maybe backpacks that aren't too stuffed. Uh, you know, so it's limited, but it does have a drain plug there. So you can, you know, fill it up with ice or something if you want for a cooler. It just won't be too deep of a cooler, but you can do that as well, uh, just like in the Ridgeline and stuff. But uh, so, I mean, a nice little extra bonus space there. I do wish it was bigger, though. That is something the Ridgeline definitely does better. But I like that they included that since that's something the Maverick, for example, does not have and uh, all the other competitors don't have either. But, um, so yeah, I think it's a pretty cool truck bed. And like I said, pretty easy to get up into there with the steps. So very easy to use. And then, you know, it's very easy to roll this back. It's got a little bit of a weight to it, so you have to use the muscle, but... There we go, and it's back in place. 
and you're all set. And by the way, if you're curious about the payload of this truck bed, Hyundai has said the truck bed itself can do 660 pounds of payload. Overall, the vehicle itself can do 1,748 pounds. A lot of people maybe don't realize if you're new to trucks, payload includes the, everything inside the vehicle. So, you know, passengers, driver, all that stuff, plus whatever's in the back here. So Hyundai kind of divided it out and said, just for the truck bed here, it's 660 pounds. But the payload overall is more than what you get in like a Maverick. And uh, so that's a nice, touch as well it's a little more capable and if you're curious about the interior of this vehicle Beth and I already did an in-depth interior review on this vehicle so I'll link that above you can go watch that if you can hear all the details but you do have less legroom than a Tucson so that's the main thing is the back seat is a little more cramped um, but you do have like this cool flip up feature where you can pull this strap and you'll see and this goes for the other side as well but you have this bin that you can actually pop out uh, some screws if you want to just have a flat floor here to load stuff into um, but nice to have the bins as well and uh, so I mean you know it has some extra practicality like that but uh, still you know isn't the biggest of back seats but again if you want a large back seat in a truck you're gonna have to go for a full-size truck basically because I mean none of the other mid-size competitors are gonna have anything much bigger than this anyway but uh, you know nice that it has that for sure and up front here it is basically the same as a Tucson with a few minor changes which again I'll cover with Beth in the interior portion but still just a very nice place to be very high-tech if you're someone who wants a high-tech mid-size truck this is the way to go for sure way more tech than you get in any of the other competitors but yes that's the outside and the inside here on the Santa Cruz so let's take it on the road and I'll talk about how it drives all right so setting off here in the Santa Cruz so the first thing you notice, well, you definitely are setting up a little bit higher than a Tucson because you definitely have more ground clearance than a Tucson. By the way, this has 8.6 inches of ground clearance to be exact. So that's a good amount of ground clearance and should help you if you want to do some light off-roading. Although, of course, we are on normal street tires. There is no off-road package, by the way, for the Santa Cruz. So there is no way to get one that's actually a little more capable off-road. Maybe that'll come down the road someday. But as of right now, only regular street tires, which is an important differentiator because like the Maverick, for example, the primary competitor of this vehicle does come with some knobbier off-road tires in its FX4 package and also you can get a sportier off-road version of the Honda Ridgeline which has uh, slightly upgraded tires as well. Uh, but anyway, other things here are just cruising on a slow park road. You have really good visibility. That's one thing I really appreciate about this vehicle. I've already driven this vehicle for a week now, and it's just very easy to drive. Now, obviously, it's longer, um, so you do have to be mindful of that whenever you're parking and stuff. But this one, being the limited trim, does also have the surround view 360 camera. So, uh, you know, a lot easier to see around you whenever you have all those cameras to cover every angle. But even, you know, nice thin A pillars. You have a dashboard that drops down very nicely. Nice high seating position, too. So, all of that really helps to make it very easy to see out of. The view out of the back is a little more narrow than some other trucks uh, with, you know, that usually have a slightly larger rear window there, but still works totally fine. I haven't had any issues in my week of driving around as far as seeing behind me. Another thing I really appreciate is you have a really responsive brake pedal. It just feels nice and natural and predictable, and that's not always a given these days. So I just like that that's so easy to use. Throttle response is also very good, especially here at lower speeds. I found myself sometimes if I'm um, in a little bit of a hurry, where I'm waiting a beat for a downshift sometimes, but as far as the actual throttle itself goes, it's very responsive and you have plenty of uh, power here with these upper trims. The SEL Premium and then this Limited version both have this bigger engine which has a lot more punch than the uh, smaller engine which I'll get to more in a minute here. But anyway, um, otherwise though, it's also nice and smooth and quiet in here, partially thanks to, again, those road tires, um, and also partially thanks to the fact this is a unibody frame vehicle, much like the Honda Ridgeline and the Maverick, and so that means that you have, you know, less jitteriness than you get in, like, a Tacoma or some other body-on-frame actual full-blown truck, and so that means, you know, with these unibody trucks, you have a smoother ride, a quieter ride, more refinement, less vibration and stuff, and, uh, you know, it's just going to feel kind of like you're driving a Tucson in many ways, again, aside from the slightly higher ride height and the much punchier engine that you don't get currently in the Tucson. But speaking of that punch, we'll go ahead and put it up into the sport driving mode. There's snow, smart, and sport. There are no off-road modes or anything either here, although you have a hill descent control and you can lock the center diff. But aside from those two things, no other off-road aids or anything. But anyway, let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it does. Here we go. It's pretty responsive. really well it's nice and strong for sure 
it might not be quite as quick as I was expecting personally because this motor puts out some very impressive numbers. We're running this two and a half liter turbocharged four cylinder engine that does 282 horsepower in this tune, 311 pound feet of torque. And it runs it all through a snappy eight speed dual clutch transmission too. Um, so you really have snappy shifts. It's very responsive and sporty with that. And then on top of that, you again have all that power of this engine. And this engine, by the way, is the um, drag race king of the unibody trucks here. It has way more power, way more torque than what you're getting in a Honda Ridgeline, which does match it pretty similarly on power thanks to its V6, but the torque is much higher here in this, um, and the Maverick only can muster 250 horsepower and about 277 pound-feet of torque. So this is hands down going to be the quickest of those trucks. Now, 0 to 60 time is about 6.3 seconds according to motor trends testing, um, and that feels about right. I'd say maybe even like six and a half, you know, wouldn't be too far of a stretch. You know, it feels punchy and quick especially whenever you're up at speed and passing people and stuff but from a dig it doesn't take off quite as much as you might be expecting but so now we're on a little bit of a rougher road here and you know i mean there's a little bit of road noise here but again it's really not bad um, for this segment of vehicle. Again, a vehicle that, by the way, starts around $25,000. I'd say this is actually above average for, you know, vehicles in that class for sure. And uh, we also have these paddle shifters here. Uh, we do have a dedicated manual mode too. Um, and pretty snappy downshifts. Upshifts are a little slow sometimes. We'll test that out some more. But anyway, we're coming to some corners here. Let's see how the Santa Cruz handles. So, it's actually pretty good. Now, obviously you do feel the weight and it does feel, you feel the higher ride height. So I'm feeling um, a little bit of like a top heavy feeling, but it's actually very well controlled. Like there's no body roll. It's just that um, I think the tires just kind of are the one thing that make me feel like I have a little bit of a lower limit than, um, you know, some other stuff like a Ridgeline. I think a Ridgeline, just based on how it feels, handles a little bit better than this. Now, according to Motor Trends testing, um, on their skid pad that they took it on, this did 0.01 G more around a skid pad than a Ridgeline. So as far as the numbers go, if you wanna dissect the numbers, this theoretically, I guess, should handle better by a hair. Um, in practice, what I've noticed is just that the Ridgeline, I had a little more confidence. That has a true torque vectoring all-wheel drive system that actually overdrives the inside rear wheel. This does a brake-based type of system that says the H-Track all-wheel drive system that Hyundai uses in other models. And so it's the pretty standard system, nothing special, I don't think, here in the Santa Cruz, really. Um, and so that system does do a torque vectoring type of thing, but it's not quite as present and evident as what you get in the Ridgeline but it still handles very well. And what I have to underscore is this handles miles better than a Tacoma or, you know, anything like that. I mean, any of those competitors, the Ranger even, which I think the Ranger actually handles pretty well for a body on frame truck. This handles better than that, I would say as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's you know pretty good for its handling. The steering weight is also nice and natural. It's a little uh, heavier here in sport mode. Now, I mentioned how there's a lower engine. So this is the top engine. It's in the top two trims, uh, this SEL premium, and then, a li and then the limited like this one is. So the base engine is a naturally aspirated four cylinder that does about 191 horsepower, and I believe about 180 or so pound feet of torque, which means you're down 90 horsepower or so, and about 130 pound feet of torque less than this turbo engine. Um, you know, yeah, I'd have to drive one of those to see, but 4,100 pounds or so, but those are probably a little bit lighter without the turbos and stuff. But, you know, even if it's 4,000 pounds, uh, you know, that's going to be a lot of weight to lug around for something with less than 200 horsepower. So I would probably recommend this engine, but again, I can't rule out the other one without, you know, testing it out first. But really, this engine, aside from having to pay more for it, there's really not much compromise. You actually lose, um, I think, about 1 mpg in certain metrics. And in other metrics, I think on the highway, this actually does 1, in, one mpg better than the naturally aspirated engine. So, uh, you know, basically the same as far as that fuel economy goes, which is pretty impressive considering, you know, how punchy this motor is. But again, I think that four cylinder without the turbo is really straining. And so that's part of why it might, you know, weigh down the uh, fuel economy ratings there for that base engine. But we'll do another acceleration. This time I'll do manual shifts here and see how it does with that. Here we go. It will let me go into first, so that's cool. And now the upshifts 
are pretty snappy. Again, it's not the best. I mean, it's not one of the best dual clutches out there, but I will say it's better than an average automatic. But the one thing with the dual clutch is there are some times where you can feel an engagement point slightly. Um, so if you're inching up in traffic, things like that, that is where you're going to start to feel that this is um, a definitely a dual clutch. And if you know what to look for, it's going to jump out at you if there's an engagement point there. If you don't like the idea of a dual clutch, that base engine does run a regular eight-speed automatic transmission with a torque converter. So that gets rid of that issue. Again, as long as you're okay taking that huge cut in acceleration performance and also a huge cut in price um, and features as well. But, uh, you know, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. There is a way to get around the dual clutch if you're not a fan of these. But I think this one's one of the better ones out there from non-luxury brands. And I think that, you know, it does a pretty good job here. I enjoyed it in the Sorento as well. And even in the Santa Fe, it did a pretty good job in that too. A couple other relevant specs to mention here is of course towing. If you're buying a truck, a lot of times you do want to tow. And this vehicle actually tows a decent amount. So it'll tow 3,500 pounds even with the front wheel drive version, which by the way is the standard powertrain um, on those lower trims. All wheel drive is an option on the on all trims, but uh, whenever you go to these higher trims with the turbo motor, it is standard with all wheel drive. But anyway, front wheel drive, 3,500 pounds, 5,000 pounds with the all wheel drive version, which is pretty impressive again for a unibody pickup truck. So that's pretty good. Maverick only tows between 2,000 pounds for the base front wheel drive ones and 4,000 pounds with an optional tow package on the turbo versions of the Maverick. So this actually kind of outspecs the Maverick in many ways. Now the truck bed back there is about two inches shorter than when you get in a Maverick. So, you know, that's just one thing to keep in mind there. Uh, you know, it's, you know, not going to be quite as good, but it's, it's two inches. It's not a huge difference, but just one little speck there where this does lose out to the Maverick slightly. Um, and of course the Ridgeline has them both beat with having a much larger bed, but it's also a slightly larger vehicle as well. But yeah, I mean, otherwise it's just been a really nice companion to drive around with this week. Um, you know, like I said, it's just it's nice and quiet, comfortable. I love all the tech in here and all the safety tech and stuff really helps as well. That is one thing, you know, Hyundais of course come with tons and tons of safety tech, even as standard. And this one being the limited has everything. So you have like the blind view monitor. So when you put on your turn signal, you know, that will give you a view of, you know, what's going on in your blind spot there, right in the, in the gauge cluster, which is great. Um, that is something you only get here on this top limited trim. Uh, but then there's a lot of other safety features like blind spot monitoring, things like that that you get. Um, you also get the highway driving assist, lane keep assist, automatic emergency braking, all those types of things here in these uh, you know, lower trims as well. And uh, yeah, so I mean, all that stuff has worked very well here in my week. I really didn't do much highway driving in this vehicle um, to test out the highway driving assist system, but we're gonna hop on the highway now and we'll test that out a little bit more. All right, so now we're just cruising on the highway here. I have the highway driving assist system on, which is the adaptive cruise control system combined with the steering assist. And uh, so it's working pretty well here so far, even though we have these little interesting patches in the road lines here. Um, but I'm having to babysit it because it is getting really close to the road lines here. And if you've watched any of my other Hyundai and uh, Kia reviews, I feel like a broken record here. But this is performing very similarly where it does ping pong a little bit more than some of the best systems out there. And it gets really close to the road lines. And in other testing of other vehicles in the past from Hyundai and Kia, this system will actually let me go onto the shoulder. It'll, it won't hold the road line. Uh, it will go over the lines sometimes. So uh, obviously this is still a hands-on system. You do have to always keep your hands on the wheel and be paying attention regardless with all these systems for the most part, aside from the Blue Cruise system and the F-150 and you know the stuff from Cadillac with the Super Cruise. But, um, you know, so you have to keep your hands on the wheel regardless, but just with other systems, you can kind of relax and let your guard down a little bit more because you can trust them to be a little bit better with steering. But yeah, this is, I'm watching it. It was basically going right over the lines here. I just have my hands hovering on the wheel, by the way. I'm letting it do the steering for me and I'm just babysitting it, but it is, it is ping pong and, and we're not even going that quickly here and we're doing about 60. Now, this isn't like a very challenging speed, but it's mostly around those corners. So if you live in an area where you don't really have many corners on the highway, this system might feel a lot more impressive to you or it might just be the vehicles like it because other reviewers <laughs> seem to have no problems with this system and absolutely love this system but every time I'm in one of these with this system it's not the best experience unfortunately I don't know why but I just have to be honest this is my experience as you can see um, you know it's sometimes it does okay like now it's doing a pretty decent job uh, it's just very hit or miss and so that means I have to always babysit it And so whenever I have to babysit a system like this I just turn it off because I'd rather just drive myself because I like driving anyway And so this stuff just kind of stresses me out more than it helps and so um, Yeah, but just keep in mind, you know, it might not be the best your experience may vary though hundred percent I'm you know gonna say that so it doesn't mean that just because I had a bad experience you will as well, but 
Um, yeah, this system still just needs a lot more polish in my opinion. Uh, but otherwise, it's a great highway cruiser. It doesn't feel too big on the road either, so it's very easy to place in your lanes. It doesn't feel too intimidating like some other large trucks do. It's not too loud, nice and smooth still, and uh, really nice out here on the highway. And the last two things I mentioned here are the fuel economy and the pricing in the Santa Cruz. So first off, fuel economy. Now, I've driven this vehicle 110 miles now, um, but I did a lot of idling. So my fuel economy is not going to be representative of what you're going to get in this vehicle. Um, so I've gotten 16.4 MPG with all the idling I was doing. Um, and, but I've been sitting in this vehicle for seven hours and 11 minutes and only went 110 miles. So that should show you just how much idling I have done. So that is not representative. What I've seen in my around town typical commuting to the grocery store and things like that is typically I'm getting between 18 and 20 mpg so that is a more accurate frame of reference as far as what you can expect here in this now as far as the fuel economy ratings for this vehicle by the epa for a limited all-wheel drive version like this with a bigger engine and stuff they're rated at 19 mpg in the city 27 on the highway and 22 combined so considering you know on all my little around town commuting trips and stuff that was all stop and go and you know back roads slow kind of suburban driving uh you know i think to be getting between 18 and 20 is very good considering 19 is the city rating um, and you know, so I have no complaints with that. I mean, because if I did more highway driving, that certainly would have brought that average up. But I think that's totally acceptable for again a mid-sized truck that is as punchy as this is. You know, I think it, it's pretty good to be getting that kind of fuel economy. Basically, there's no other way to get something better unless you're going for the Ford Maverick. That base motor in the Maverick is a standard hybrid that does like 40 miles to the gallon, which is crazy. So if you want, you know, a small truck and you're okay with front-wheel drive, Maverick definitely hands down the way to go. Um, as long as you're okay having less power and stuff as well. But that is uh, hands down the fuel economy king. But then the last thing to mention here is the pricing in the Santa Cruz. And that is another thing that's actually pretty competitive. So of course the Maverick grabbed all the headlines with its $20,000 starting price, which after destination is actually like about $21,500. But even still, uh, the Maverick does undercut this about by about $4,000. And the Maverick with that price point is gonna be the biggest uh, problem and competitor to the Santa Cruz. But it really isn't quite as huge of a difference as you might expect. It's again just pretty consistently about four thousand dollars less and even when you go for these top trims like this fully loaded limited is uh, right around forty one and a half thousand dollars um, and that has basically everything in it and a fully loaded Maverick that's comparable to this is going to be running about thirty seven so it, again maintains about that four thousand uh, dollar discount there for the Maverick but keep in mind that the Maverick even with its top trim gives you less power it gives you less tech on the inside here you know much simpler technology in the Maverick smaller screens no digital gauges uh, you also have no cooled seats in the Maverick which you get here in these top trims of this and also you know the blind view monitor the surround view 360 camera all those types of things there's a lot more tech in this and so I think that plus the extra power plus the fact that the Hyundai gives you the 10 year 100,000 mile warranty which is about double what Ford will give you on the powertrain warranties on their vehicles um, you know, that means that, especially if you're someone who's buying one of these to keep it for a good while, you have the extra warranty coverage and the extra tech, the extra power. You get a lot of extra stuff for that extra $4,000. And so I would say that, you know, they're really neck and neck from a value standpoint, this and the Maverick. It's also worth noting though, that the Ridgeline, although um, the Ridgeline does start a lot higher, they start about $36,000. And for those who are curious, if you do want a base Santa Cruz with front wheel drive and everything, those will run you about $25,500. So that is the starting price, again, about 4,000 more than the Maverick. Um, and so, you know, if you're shopping something in the 20s, obviously the Ridgeline's a non-starter because that starts at like $37,000 or whatever. But if you are shopping in those upper trims, even though the Ridgeline starts at 36 or 37, it maxes out around 44. So only a couple more than this. And that's only for the black edition. The RTL E, which is basically a fully loaded Ridgeline, is right around 41, $42,000 as well. So if you're someone who would prefer a V6 or the slightly larger bed or the slightly larger back seat and you're okay sacrificing tech, you know, the Honda also does has a much smaller and more dated infotainment screen. Gauges are a lot less impressive, stuff like that. But if you don't mind not having as much tech, just keep in mind you can also get another great unibody mid-size truck with a little more actual truck usability with the Ridgeline for basically the same money, again, if you're going for those higher trims. But, you know, I think the Santa Cruz here really strikes a sweet spot between having, you know, this really high-tech experience, which is really largely missing from mid-size pickups, especially unibody ones. Um, they're missing that in all the others. This has that. This has that great warranty, which I think a lot of truck buyers would probably value. 
and the extra power, which is something you know, that gives you better towing cap capability and all that kind of stuff, which is something, again, that's a little bit lacking here in this segment. And I think that you get a combination that's very appealing. And then you just put the cherry on top with these sweet, awesome looks that are eye-catching and you know, turn everyone's heads. Um, you know, I think it's a very compelling package. And I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of demand for these. I think they'll be very popular, um, but it might even be more popular than people are expecting because uh, based off the reactions I've been getting here so far, this is going to be a very hot vehicle uh, for the next year or so here at least. Um, but yeah, so that's all of my thoughts here on the Santa Cruz. Uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on them in the comments below. Huge thanks to Hyundai for providing me here with the Santa Cruz to review for you guys today. And yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.